Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by 1FC lightweight Carlos Fodor. Carlos, how are you? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. Carlos, you got a fight coming up September 13th at 1FC 10. How's training been going for the fight? Man, it's going really good, man. I'm injury free and uh, cardio is good. Everything weights down. Everything is good. I couldn't ask for it to be any better. Mm hmm. Carl, so let's go back to your last fight. That was back in February at UFC 157. You fought Sam Stout. You lost by what some people would say was a controversial split decision. Uh, personally, I had scored the fight for you. Um, a lot of people also had scored the fight for you. What went wrong for you in, in the fight, if anything? And how did you feel overall about your performance? Uh, I wasn't very really happy with my performance overall. You know, uh... I was allowing him to hold me against the fence a lot, which was slowing down everything. And, um, you know, he, he shot for some takedowns, which I wasn't uh, expecting either. So uh, I, I really wasn't happy with how, how it went down, but I honestly thought I had done enough to win. You know, it came down to like the last minute and a half of the final round. And I knew, I, in my mind, I thought if I could stop him from taking me down because I was pushing the pace, that I, I'd pull off the decision. So I was, uh, you know, definitely upset and shocked when I, when I heard the decision. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Why do you feel that you didn't get the win? What do you think the judges were, were looking at to allow you not to get the nod? Um, I, I think it was allowing him to push me up against the fence. You know, in their eyes, it's control. Even though I'm pretty comfortable with my back on the fence because I, I land pretty good knees to the body there. Um, and I'm really comfortable with taking down the fence off, off the fence with my back's on it. So I think you know, I was comfortable in the fight when he had me there because I wasn't, I wasn't getting hurt and I felt I was hurting him with body body knees, but um, in their eyes, you know, I was getting controlled and I, I couldn't get off the set, so I think that's what, uh, what, what got me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, you were on a really good roll. I think you were on a five-fight win streak. Maybe it was a six-fight win streak. Yeah, it was a six-fight win streak you were on, and then you hit a speed bump when you fought Pat Healy, and then you followed it up uh, with another loss against Sam Stout. What has this last couple of months uh, and, you know, a year year plus basically been for you because you haven't uh, been in the winner's circle. What's it been like and uh, what corrections have you made to your game uh, based on these losses that you've suffered in back-to-back fights? Um, it's been a horrible experience, you know. It really, uh, from going on such a high, you know, and everything was going so well to to those losses, and it was just horrible timing to, to, to losing a cut from the UFC, so... Um, you know, it's been really rough, but it's also in, in the layoff too. You know, because I lost to Healy and then I didn't fight for a year, which mm-hmm. you know really sucked because Strike Force was going under, so and there was no fight. So the, the layoff, you know, didn't help. And then um, coming back in, uh, it just it's really sucks. But I'm looking forward now to, to getting back on track, and I've made some adjustments. You know, um, it's opened my eyes to, to to some training that I can do better, and I've started training with Demetrius Johnson all, all the time now mm-hmm. for his uh, his camp and changed up my conditioning and. Pretty much just following in his footsteps what he does, and you know, I think it's, it's going to pay off for sure. Mm-hmm. Not that it, it really matters a whole lot because, like I mentioned earlier, I had scored the Sam Stout fight for you. Was there a little bit of ring rust? Because you mentioned you didn't fight for over a year. You had a, a Josh Thompson fight that you were supposed to have, but it was canceled because the event got canceled, and then eventually Strike Force went out of business. Was there a little bit of ring rust in that Sam Stout fight? Um. I don't know, but I don't think it was rushed. It was just, uh, you know, it had been a while, which is never really good. But I, I felt really good, and honest. I was in great shape, and uh, I think I was just too comfortable, you know, and I was uh, not, not pushing it like I should have. But I, I felt really good. I don't think there was any ring rust. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Obviously, when you sign to fight with the UFC, nothing's guaranteed. Just because you have a, a three, four, five fight deal, wh- whatever your contract is, they don't have to give you all those fights that you can be cut at any time. But considering that you were on a nice roll in Strike Force, you did have the one loss to Pat Healy, but before that, you were, you know, in the mix, as they say, you were in the mix for the lightweight title in Strike Force. You came over to the UFC. Had a, a pretty good fight with Sam Stout. You unfortunately didn't get the nod, and they eventually cut you. Were you surprised they didn't give you at least one more chance, considering that a lot of people thought you had won the Sam Stout fight? Yeah, yeah, I was definitely shocked. You know, I, I thought for sure I'd at least get one more because if I was so close, you know. Um, but you know, it was also at the time where they were cutting everybody. You know, mm-hmm. like Chick Congo just got cut, and I, I was really nervous because. I had heard they were making a lot of room, and I was like, man, it's just not good timing coming off the loss and the stout. So, um, yeah, I, I was nervous, but I was shocked. Mm-hmm.
Mm-hmm. What did they tell you when they released you? Did they just contact your manager and, and that was that? Or did Joe Silva call you and say, hey, you know, we, we love what you did for us, but we just it's a numbers game and, and right now your number doesn't fit into it. Did they give you an explanation or was it just kind of through your manager you found out you were released? Yeah, just through my manager. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see, I see. But uh, moving on, you've got this fight for 1FC coming up. Uh, is this a multiple fight deal with 1FC? Uh, yes, I signed a, a six-fight deal. Oh, really? Really? Were there other offers on the table? Because it seems like 1FC, uh, if you weren't going to fight for the UFC, 1FC would be the logical choice for you. Obviously, your, your trainer, Matt Hume, works for them. It seems like you know a very good match. W- were there other offers on the table, or was that always the plan? If you weren't going to be in the UFC or Strike Force, it was to be with 1FC? Uh, yeah, we, we didn't bother talking. As soon as I got cut... Um Matt knew that I, I would want to go to 1FC. I, I'm really a big fan of the rules over there. You know, the, the soccer kicks, um, me, me as the head on the ground. I was, I've always wanted to do that since the Pride Day. So uh, that was a huge attraction. And then, you know, I being in kind of a slump, you know, I was thinking I need to enjoy this whole MMA thing and, you know, kind of you know, get something out of it besides just fighting because I was kind of in a hole. Um, but in the travel aspect, you know, I'll get to see different parts of the world that I know and I would, would never get to see. So it just fit perfectly, and it was our first option. We didn't, uh, we didn't talk to anybody else. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How much are you looking forward to the trip overseas? You haven't fought outside of the United States in your entire career, and, and this will be the first time. How, how much are you looking forward to that? Um, I'm pretty stoked, man. I was able to go and uh, help Bibiano Fernandez in mm-hmm. his fight in Manila when he fought for the title, so I traveled with him over there, and I got to, you know, be around the whole 1FC group and how they run things. It's such a professional organization, and, it, I mean, it's really great. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited, man. It's going to be a great time. Mm-hmm. Now, how will you adapt to the time? Do you have a, a better sense for the time change because of, of you helping out Bibiano Fernandez, or will you still um, have to adjust some things so you can adjust to the time so that won't be an issue? Yeah, you know, um, I, I kind of judged. I did a trial, you know, mm-hmm. basis run when I went with him and, and mm-hmm. saw how I felt when the, from when I landed until he fought on Friday night. And uh, yeah, it's not going to. I get there. You know, I think I arrived on a Monday and we fight mm-hmm. on a Friday, so I should be. And you know, if I start my training earlier here, where I start, you know, uh, change my sleep schedule in about a week and a half back home, then it really won't be an issue for me. Um, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Mm-hmm. Now, who's going to be cornering you for this fight? Obviously, it's a little bit of a conflict of interest for Matt Hume, who works for 1FC, to also corner you. So uh, I, I think he's out. So who's going to be cornering you? Um, I'm bringing my sparring partner, Brandon Dudley, and uh, Scott McDonald. They're both professional fighters, and uh, yeah, I'm just great teammates, and I'm, 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 those are the guys I'm bringing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, are you a very good flyer? Are you are you someone who, who gets sick on planes? Are, are you okay with that? You know, Flying-wise, is, is it going to be a good trip for you? Uh, no, I, I don't get sick, and you know, I'm not nervous or anything, but man, that's such a long trip. Yeah. <laughs> the Bibiano fight to Manila was, uh, man, it, when you're on a plane for 10 hours, then you, you have to lay over for a couple hours, and you hop back on for another five, and it just really sucks. So I'm not looking forward to the flight at all, but once we get there, it should be, uh, should be a good time. Mm-hmm. When will you start your weight cut? Will you already be cutting weight on the flight over, or will you wait until you get there to start it? Um, the, the water weight, uh, I'll wait till I, till I get there. Um, I'm expecting to you know, retain a lot of water from the flight. But I'm already on a very strict diet and trying to cut right now. So uh, it's all right. I started at 180. I'm, I'm down to 70 now, and I just want to lose about eight more pounds of actual weight and then go for the rest with water. But, um, yeah, I, I won't start the actual water cut until I'm over there. Mm-hmm. On September 13th, you're going to be taking on Yang Sung Ho. How much do you know about him? Uh, I've seen a couple of his tapes. I know that he's a uh, you know undefeated up and comer. Um, that that's really all I really know. I think he comes from a grappling. He started with grappling, then he went to Thailand and did some Muay Thai. So I'm expecting him to be pretty well rounded. Uh, it's hard to find some really good footage on him. He's only had a couple fights, uh, um, and other than that, I really don't know too much about him. Mm-hmm. Now you're coming from fighting Pat Healy and Sam Stout back-to-back. Do you feel that this is a step down in competition for you, or do you feel that this is just the appropriate step to build yourself back up? Um, That's a good question, man. I I think, I I definitely don't think he's as experienced as Mm -hmm. as Pat Healy or Sam Stout. Those are two very experienced fighters, so um, in that aspect, uh, I don't. I don't think experience-wise that he, he's on the same level. But you know, I haven't fought him yet. I have no idea what uh, sure. what he's like. He, he's been taking his time fighting. He's like one or two fights a year or something like that. So I'm, I'm preparing for a guy who's like a, a true up and comer and is 
going to bring his A game, but uh, I really won't know until after the fight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now you seem like a very big fan of mixed martial arts. Is that, is that accurate? Are you are you one of those guys who tries to catch every fight out there? Uh, I used to. Mm. Um, the closer I get to a fight, uh, I, I kind of shun away from it a little bit because I got so much in my of myself. You know, just the fight is constantly going through my head and training so brutal that as a fight gets nearer and nearer. I kind of fade away from the sport, but when it's when I'm not fighting and it's just like just straight, you know, good time and training for fun, then I'm all over it. Mm-hmm. Now you mentioned that going over to One FC, you're a big fan of their rule set because they have the similar rule set that Pride used to have. Um, they also have the former Pride announcer Lenny Hart. She does the walkouts for the fighters. She announces them when they walk out. How much are you looking forward to having her call your name? That's going to be pretty cool, man. Like yeah. I said, I, when I started MMA, um, Pride was like my number one. I, I just loved it. That was the show, everything about it. So this is going to be, uh, it'll be pretty crazy to, to hear that. Mm-hmm, definitely, definitely. I was reading your UFC bio, and one thing I noticed was when they asked you about your heroes, uh, you said that you had a bunch of heroes, but the heroes that you named, uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, Chi, Fedor, and Vandalay Silva, and, and you went on to say you have some more besides that list, but since you named those guys by name, uh, just curious, why are those your heroes? Uh, I guess, you know, guys, Van, the, the MMA fighters, just because I, I love that their style of fighting, how aggressive mm-hmm. they are, they just got heart. You know, true heart of like true warriors, man. Vandalay and his his bare knuckle days is just so inspiring. He has no quit in him. Um, so I really admire that. And the other guys, you know, just anybody who who stood up against controversy, you know, and for what's right and, and fought those kind of battles is something that I really look up to. And uh, you know, I try to follow them as much as I can, and you know, live my life by that kind of standard. And, which is honestly really hard. And I've never accomplished anything close to what they have. But uh, it's just someone to look up to. You know, people that can uh, stand up. For what's right. Mm-hmm. Also, in your bio, you also mentioned that uh, your dream to land in a fight would be the high nine or the crow cop kick, as you called it in, in the bio. You know, why would that be your dream technique to land? Uh, it, it started as a joke because I'm really not flexible at all, and kicking oh. <laughs> people's head is uh, just not even, not even. Well, but in the beginning, it wasn't even a possibility. I'd fly off my feet by trying to get my leg up there, so mm-hmm. it was. Uh, it was kind of a joke to get guys to maybe expect it because I would never ever do it. But mm. now my pleasure. I've been doing hot yoga for a couple of years now, and it's good enough. So now it's possibility. I know. Um, starting out, my flexibility is always been so bad. There's always been a huge joke in the gym that if I ever want to fight by a knockout by high kick, you know what a crazy thing it was, and all these treats in the gym I would get. So uh, if I ever do get it, it'll be quite a quite a show at the gym. Mm-hmm. Carlos, what's your short-term goal here? Is it to just rebuild, get back on the winning track, and get some wins, and then really make a strong push in 2014 for that 1FC title? Or are you just belt hunting right now? And if you get a win here, you want Aoki next. You know, what, What's the plan here short-term? Um, I, I'm in no rush. You know, I, I want to definitely get back on the winning streak and stay there, and I really want to develop my game. The last couple of fights, you know, I've, I've pointed out some serious holes that I have, and I, I need to fix those. And I, I don't want to be a guy that just kind of goes in and, it looks the same, so I'm really striving. I've changed up my conditioning. You know, like I said, following with Demetrius Johnson, I'm, I'm trying to really evolve as a martial artist and get better and fix those things. So, um, short term, I just want to win some fights here. But long term, you know, I'm looking to have a very successful career. I'm only 29, and uh, I definitely want the the one FC title. Though I, w- I want to, you know, fight Aoki. Okay, I want to get that title, but I'm in no rush to do it. I don't mm-hmm. care how many fights I have to, to fight to get there, as long as I'm winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You you have six fights. Uh, with 1FC, so you definitely have some time. But just curious, obviously not looking past your opponent for September 13, but you know that's always got to be in the back of your mind. How would you do against the champ? So how do you feel you do match up against Shinya Aoki? Um, I, I think like like a lot of guys do, you know, no one really would want to go to the ground with him. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, I, I think I, I have all the attributes that I would need to, to beat him. You know, he ha- he does get he has been knocked out in the past and. Uh, if you can stop those takedowns and keep the fight standing, you got a pretty good chance with him. But he like he's a he's a legend, man. On the ground, I, I know friends that have rolled with him. They he's legit. On the, he's a sneaky guy. So uh, yeah, I, I think I could beat him though for sure. I'm, I'm confident in that. But man, he's a he's a tough guy. Mm-hmm. Coming off back to back losses, is there anything that you're looking to showcase? Uh, may- maybe to yourself, to your team, uh, maybe maybe to the fans. You know, is there anything you're looking to showcase in this fight? Any improvements that you're you're hoping to show this time around? Uh, yeah, I, just, I want to finish this fight. I don't want I don't want any decisions. I don't want a slow drawn out fight. I want to go out there and put on a show, take advantage of these new rules, and, and get a finish.
Mm-hmm. How exciting is it for you to be performing in front of fans that you know probably have never seen you fight before, definitely have never seen you fight live before, uh, but you know it, it's a new experience for you. How, how much are you looking forward to putting on a show for fans who maybe for the first time will be exposed to you? I'm excited for it. You know, I, I think uh, I, I'll have an opportunity to really to start growing a market over there. You know, it broadcasts everywhere over in Asia. Mm-hmm. So, that, I mean, that's that's a huge fan base possibility. And I just want to, you know, Vanderlei started out over there, and I, am, I would love to, you know, kind of follow his footsteps a little bit, just be exciting and aggressive and finish people. That'd be a dream of mine. So I hope it, uh, hope it works out. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Carlos, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Uh, just to the fans, I appreciate you guys' support so far, and I look forward to putting on a good show for you. And uh, thank you very much for having me on the show. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Carlos, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck September 13th at 1FC10 against Yang Sung Ho. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you soon.